So you have different aspects of the South End story here that's really reflecting this installation, including the dog training school that was here as well uh, with Major Richardson. And Major Richardson worked with Airedale Terriers previously for the police. It was then seconded to the government while training war dogs. And again, that's an, a rather overlooked part of, of the Great War, looking at guard dogs and patrol dogs and equally dogs that would be used to go into no man's land and ferry um, first aid equipment to wounded soldiers. So one of these dogs would have a, a kind of a backpack or a side pack with some essential medical equipment that would then go into no man's land on its own and ferry the goods um, to the wounded soldiers and they could then do their basic first aid on themselves until an orderly could then come and pick them up. In fact, so many different units were requiring dogs on the frontline service that actually there were calls for dogs to be donated to this facility. So we have instances whereby um, a wife, for instance, said, my husband first went to war, then my son went to war, and now they want my dog. And what we have here is a very interesting and innovative use of dogs in warfare that today is quite normal. Um, the, the security services, the armed forces, they all use dogs today. But this is where we first see it on a large scale being used and it's wonderful to have Shrewby Ness highlighted for that because it's quite significant.